This is WAGA TV Channel 5 Atlanta, and it's time now for the Eyewitness News Noon Report for this Tuesday, March 12th, 1991. Here now, Peter Wiggins. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Peter Wiggins, and here's what I've done. Eyewitness News and Noon Report. There. The owner of Cobb County's first new dancing club filed for bankruptcy in federal court Monday, but that was not good news for opponents of the establishment. It means the club. Boomer's Bar and Grill of Marietta can continue operating the way it does since it began offering adult entertainment last Wednesday. The bankruptcy found by Patrick Rockwell, Barcelona owner of Boomer's effectively blocked the Cobb Superior Court judge from enforcing a temporary restraining order issued last Friday bar and new dance at the club for 30 days. Judge Jay Grant friendly will that Barcelona says has petitioned in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the Northern District of Georgia protects him from actions such as restraining order issued against this club last week by Cobb Superior Court Judge Dorothy Robinson. I did not feel I have any power or authority to go forward at this time. We have enforcing in a restraining order Judge Brentley issued. The order was issued at the Court of James C. Walls of Lennon, who owns the building occupied by Boomer's Bar and Grill on South Cobb. Publishing staff of Windy Hill Road. 41. Marietta Walsh has maintained that first new Denton violates this lease, which says the villain will be. It was like a big boom. I thought it was a train at first. Set it for a family win statement. Despite the order, the club offered topless dance on Saturday. Walsh sent his attorney, Ron Thompson, up. But he came to court Monday seeking to have the order enforced, only to learn that. Russell also, who lives at 4505 Forest Peak Circle in Marietta, had filed for a bankruptcy earlier in the day. And in the decision, Judge Brentley cited federal laws that states that a petition filed under the title operates as a state ethical to all entities that come commencement of consideration of a judicial act in a proceeding against the Janet, thanks for that. And more Police in Colorado. Saddam Hussein's after three carjackings and a wild chase. Troops shelled the Muslim rebels in mosques in the holy city of Kabuk and distracted the thousands elsewhere. Operation Bender Reprint that day. They said that shite fighters as well as civilians trapped in that crossfire were being slaughtered and that 500 men killed or wounded that Friday. The patriotic union of Kurdistan claimed that the government has rendered up 5,000 groups, mostly women and children, and using them as a human shield to forestall an attack in New York. Into Tree City, correct. Birkin also said that rebels have been able to seize the strategic oil town of Kanakin, about 36 miles from Baghdad. Official sources in Baghdad claim that Republican Guard troops have reestablished the control of Karbala, about six miles south of the Iraqi capital, after several days of fierce combat. They gave no details, but Hussein forces appeared to have been isolating centers for resistance, such as Kabal in the southern part city of Barra. Then they have to remove the truck and fix the guardrail. We're tracking in Atlanta, storm. It Georgia lawmakers ended a no-fault automobile insurance Monday and agreed to give motorists a break on their amount they must pay to protect their cars. The Senate gave final passage to the insurance reform measure on a 54 to 1 vote and sent it to Governor Zell Miller for his signature. Miller said on Monday that he plans to sign the measure as quickly as we can get it out. In exchange for giving up the no-fault protection, Georgia motorists would be in line for the potential savings from a required 15% reduction in auto insurance rates. The base lantern from which actual premiums are figured, both Miller and said the newly reelected insurance commissioner Tim Riles promised during the last year's campaign to deliver auto insurance production rates to Georgia consumers. Those were the four things that were the guts of the Zell Miller promise in insurance, Miller said. What I said to the voters, we delivered on. Miller said that he would not have been able to get what he worked had to be and agreed to eliminate in the 16-year-old no fault system under. That the registration in fact to require insurance compatible to their customers. In waiting what coverage they will lose under the deed law. Senator offer skin edge the fourth. Revolving in Newman's proposed increase in the liability limit on Paul. We'll say from 15,000 to 30,000, but later we have through the idea. But if we're going to do way with the no fault, let's provide production for any other. And Senator Edge are good. We got the offerings of the coverage. That's what you have insurance for. With us all day long, we'll step you through this storm and beyond. Ahead, Erica. All right. Washington. The Bush administration is considering requiring welfare parents to have their children immunized against measles as a condition of receiving the benefits of federal health officials said Monday. With certain some measles has occurred mainly because that some parents, particularly in the inner cities, are not having their children vaccinated until they enter school when it was required, said Dr. William Warper, director of the Federal Centers of Disease Control in Atlanta. 
Well, means those back in the age levels are more than 95% among school children levels as low as 50% for their preschools, particularly minorities in some inner city areas. Dr. Roper told the House Energy and Commerce Health Security last year around 25,000 cases of measles. In quarter 97 possible related deaths were reported. Nearly half all the cases occurred among children under 5 years old. The National Vaccine Advisory Committee reported in January. Recent CDC investigations of some measles outbreaks found that as many as 90% of unvaccinated children who had the disease were enrolled in at least one public assistance program, as such as aid to families with dependent children and women, infants, and children or weak program. They children who have been vaccinated by the time of the school entry because school law requires that we know that parents do not actually oppose the immunization for their children. But immunization is just not an immediate priority until it's required for school, Dr. Roper said. Approval from Congress would have been needed to deny welfare benefits to offer as eligible individuals and Representative Henry Waxman, Deputy of California Subcommittee Chairman, said the didn't like the administration idea. Chuck Young and Marietta read the book on Monday during a break from his job test and automotive admissions and Young decided to sit out in the sun during this break. The station's at the corner of Terminal Hill and Cobb Parkway in Smyrna. They had no way to predict what happened. Kuwait City pro-democracy activists demanded Monday that Kuwait's government set a date for a parliamentary election. They also accused members of the real Lynn family of forming a death squad that tensions about the future of Kuwait burst in the opening. We don't want Kuwait to be headed a family or one person, said Abdullah al Harabari, a former member of the prominent and head of the newly formed Kuwait Democratic Firm. He went in Democratic government. al Harabari issued a list of demands stopped by a call by the return of the 1985 parliament, which was dissolved by Kuwait ruler Shui Jabir al Ahmad al Sabah in 1986. Next came called for freedom under the press. Expression and assembly all restricted since that time. He also urged that the government to legalize. Political parties, independent labor unions, and student organizations don't allow women to vote. In the news conference, a former parliament and businessmen was joined by several other activists from the Forum and Umbrella Group of Leftist Independent Nationalist and Muslim Organization. They called on the international community, especially in the United States and Britain, and an exert pressure to the Kuwaiti government to reform. I think in the international community, which supported the liberation of Kuwait, the must support the demonstration of Kuwait, said Ghanem al Nadra and Nudaval Waran. Washington and a number of his vaccinations in the United States exploded in the 1980s. The census shows whites had a small share of the nation's population at the end of the decade and blacks gained only slightly. The number of the the vast changes in the nation's composition in the past decades in the 1950s, less than 1% of the country were candid and some of them went white or black. 40 years later, it was only then 7%. The nation's white majority declined from 80% of the population and 80% blacks remained the largest minority at 39 million of the 30% gain of the decade and 30% of the population. The number of Af Asians and Pacific Islanders being in the United States more than doubled in the 1980s. The fastest growing group for it's 7.2 million dollars a year, 3% of the population. The it grew by 53% to 23.4 million and were 9% of the nation. People declared themselves Hispanics could also be counted by members of the racial group, such as white or black. It was impossible to say how many of each race and considering themselves in the culture Hispanic. 12 million people were sent in the word. American Indians up 30% from 10% earlier. Nearly 10 million people said they were of a race other than the choices given on the census form. The rich mix suggests that ethnic policies will be important in the 1990s. With immigration policy and equal opportunity in the hot issues, said David Sincourt, director of the Center for Immigration Studies. I think there's a new FX that sweat themselves as it has the effect of pushing any aid FX layout. Just covering their ethnicity and wanting to ensure the pain. He said, I think Judaism and Latinos and Asians are more diverse, said Bill O'Hare at the Population Reference Bureau. Let them look at it in a scientific way and tell uh, the world if they really think that this radar data showing the airplane moving off of the way. In Atlanta, Cobb County Fire Chief David Hilton let the push Monday to get a Senate bill regarding fire sprinkles in the state's nursing homes out of a house committee where they would have been bottled up since being passed by the Senate. Lieutenant Governor Pierre Howard, who made Senate Bill 182 a part of his legislature package, told about 100 people, mostly firefighters, at a capital attend the news comments Monday morning that the bill has won an extraordinary stiff opposition from the nursing home lobby. Hilton, president of the International Association of Patriots, said the bill's opponents are gambling with the lives of elderly people who would be unable to escape fires in the nursing homes. There has never been no record in the history of this nation a multi-death fire in a fully sprinkled building. Hilton said this state 
Just recorded words. No. He added misdreating and our power to protect these people who can't protect themselves. All right. Recent nurse and home fires in Johnson City, Tennessee, and Colorado Springs Colorado that has. ABC News, New York. Took 35 lives, showed the need for sprinklers. Hilton said. In Johnson City, 16 were lost and another nine were killed in Colorado last week, and said another 27 are on the verge of losing their lives from that fire. In a statement released Monday, Freddie Watson, executive director of the Georgia Healthcare Association, said that the owners of the 300 nursing homes that belong to the association don't want to pose the bill. But Watson said, because as many as 200 homes are losing $100,000 or more a year, the operators need state help to solve sprinkler systems. This may then cost 75000 each. Hilton and Lieutenant Governor Howard Express coming in and set the bill. If adopted to the House of Human Relations and Aging Committee, while well, passing the full house, people under this gold dome knew what it was. The responsibility to protect lives, Hilton said. He would set a cop. Let's say you're asking last week if a fire like this one could cover could happen here. I looked at my watch and said, any minute now. Common across personal care homes described as Hilton as a halfway point between people living by themselves and going into a nursing home with seven or more. President said sprinkler service is so much requirement for nursing homes, however many have voluntary installed partial sprinkler systems, he said. We've been able to bulk them into the over the years, Tilton said. County law requires that a fire truck be able to get within 90 feet of any building that has no sprinklers. That is why sprinklers are installed as long as water lines to the facility meets the county water flow. We come as 1,000 and 1,005 gallons a minute. Cobb Fire Marshal Nathan Wilson said. Vienna and Sprinter required that all multi family and commercial buildings have sprinklers. Wilson said on Monday afternoon in the Cobb has five nursing homes that are fully protected by a sprinkler, one that is partially protected and one that has no sprinklers. Atlanta Healthcare Center and Monkey Road in South Cobb has no sprinklers, he said. Shady Grove West Home in Old US 41 in Kansas has sprinklers in its main building but an additional build of non commercial material in about 1980 so has no sprinklers. Wilson said a nursing home, Ross Memorial, is being built by Shady Grove owners adjacent in the current facility will be fully uh, uh, fitted with sprinklers, he said. In Atlanta, a bill to restructure the carbon Marietta Coliseum exhibit all has the F40 was finally approved Monday by the House. At the Cubs, 10 member House delegation agreed to changes in the bill to be made Friday by the Senate. The bill now goes to the Governor and Fiddle's signature that 40 in the Senate to see that they once a year's revenue was generated by the tax on the Cobb Hotel and Motel Patriots to build a convention center. Senate Bill 395, originally sponsored by Senator Steve Thompson, to have got power to bring eliminate the appointment of the Cobb Chamber of Commerce, Cobb Marietta, the Convention and Visitors. Bureau at Cobb Municipal Association from the seven member of Florida. Judge Attorney General Michael Bowers is an opinion sought by Marietta Mayor Joe Matt Whistlin as authority member and former Senator Roy Barnes. The F 40s lawyer said the F 40 must be made up by members appointed to by Tom Barnes was made the power to the levy taxes. Senator Thomas Bill calls for a 40 the members by the mayor of Marietta, the mayor of Smyrna, the chairman of the Cobb Board of Commissioners, and one member each appointed by the County Commission and the Cobb Parks and Recreation Commission. These five mayor, Mayor Wilson, Sprinter Mayor, Max Bacon, and um, Commission Chairman Dr. Philip Sacrist, and Commission appointee John Williams, and the appointing chairman and Parks and Recreation appointee Barbara Williams would be appointed and remaining two members of the seven member of 40. A amendment and added in the House by Representative John Hammond, Democrat of Marietta, also said that one. To only two other seven members can live outside Cobb, the County Commission appointee, and one of the two appointees picked by the of the five members, but the amendment also had mistakenly called for two shots, uh, two slots, filed by the County Commission and the Parks and Recreation Commission, and to be appointed with 30 days after the bill goes in effect. Sure. The intended amendment was the after two members chosen by the of our five of 40 members to be picked within 30 days. Senator Thompson and Representative Hammond said and the Senate made the change Friday, and the House agreed Monday, leaving only the governor's signature to enact the bill in the law. In really a matter, Representative Hammond's House bill on which would let the county raise its yeah, hotel motel tax at 8 percent from 6 percent to be billed in the convention center, is expected to be 49 to House bill passed the House and was amended by the Senate to exclude Augusta and Richmond County, which has now to be deleted from the legislature. The house today is expected to be approved by amendment to the state collect hotel motel taxes and state operate lodges and use that money to promote tourism in the area surrounding the lodges. Those state lodges in Cobb County also let me explain a little of that. In Atlanta, all Mac members of the Kappa Delta Sorority will collect 
donation Saturday at the Kroger on Saturday on Sunday Plains Road to raise money for the Georgia Council of Child Views. Member of the line tonight, oh, Manaka Association Capital will be uh, Kroger from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The group also have members of the Kroger on the Alabama Road and offer at that day 80% of the funds collected will be given to Georgia Child Abuse Prevention Programs that range 20% will go to the National Committee of Prevention of Child Abuse for the Nationwide Public Awareness Programs. For more information, call Melody Cookson at 370-0941. And line on Governor Zell Miller asked federal officials Monday for $6.3 million in disaster relief for 13 North Georgia counties ravaged by high winds and flooding. Covered by Miller's request are Eplin, Atkinson, Bacon, Barriott, Brooks, Coffee, Grady, Jones, Lander, Lomans, London's Pearson, Thomas Counties, Miller declared a state of emergency in these areas which have been raked by severe storms, tornadoes, high winds, and heavy rains, and what's ever flooding since May the 1st. Several school systems have been included in several private non-profit facilities that have damaged debris as it sent to Millwood in a letter to the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The state would provide an initial $1 million in aid, and Miller said, as of Monday, there will be no deaths and few injuries in the affected counties, but 183 homes and 27 businesses have been destroyed or damaged. Atlanta, at least two state prison guards have been questioned and subjected to the polygraph test in connection with a photograph of a prisoner who was handcuffed and forced to stand outside for eight hours watching work detail. State prison officials said the handcuffing of the prisoner did not violate the prominent correction rules, but the guards who documented the treatment broke the rules by photographing the prisoner. Regulations prohibited the use of handcuffs as punishment. Photographing an inmate was also prohibited. One of the photographs was given by union officials to Democratic Correction Commissioner Bobby K. Whitworth. The incident occurred at the Georgia Diagnosis and Classification Center near Jackson. We believe that there is it may be used in an assault. No one was hurt. Trade situation and that the prison should congratulate those who reported in and brought it to the light rather than harass or punish them, said Grant Williams of the Georgia State Employees Union. Because it's several prisons, according to the Diagnosis Center, are involved in the labor disputes with wardens. Prison system spokesman Fred Steeples refused to discuss the Investigation in the source of the photograph, but said the agency had not violated its own policy in settling of Alvin Russian, a 33 year old convicted armed robber. Russian is scheduled to be prison at May after serving a entire five year prison sentence. He had been refused to go on work detail. Just three weeks ago, a slight limp was diagnosed as Albany and more aggressive handling of domestic violence cases that helped reduce Albany murder rate by almost half since then. South Georgia town was dubbed the nation's murder capital two years ago. FBI awarded the dubious distinction to Albany in 1989 based on a statistic that showed that Albany Metropolitan Area had 24 murders per 100,000 residents in 1990. As the last year, the area's murder rate had dropped 45% and was the lowest in five years. 1989, the state recorded 19 murders per 100,000 residents by 1990. The number was 13 city police said the 1989 murder rate had been also been the 1986 rate of 21 murders and the 87 rate of 17. A majority of the 1988 homicides involved domestic disputes said police chief Washington Long. Yeah. Police and city officials have joined the forces to combat the domestic violence program, coordinating and social service and law, Meantime, you are law enforcement. We're trying to do something more accurate. It, you got all these resources, but they weren't being used. Our task force, the domestic violence, adopted a policy allowing police to arrest the suspect. There is evidence that violence had occurred in a different situation. Volatile. Previously, a few suspected believers went to jail, and the most serious charge filed against them were. The Zoya conduct long said most of them would just go home and finish off the job. He said, on the right, when get no sick of the beatings that she would kill the husband. Now suspected betterers are getting arrested and prosecuted more often. City officials said judges also are ordered in counseling as part of the sentence by the man convicted of battery. Here. Stock market Dow Jones closed at 29.39.36, down 50.84 points. New York Stock Exchange closed at 204.04, down 91 cents. Amy, close at 354.86, down 145. OTC, close at 467.15, down 796. And SB5, close at 372.96, down 199. In sports tonight, the Hawks beat at the Omni, taking on the Philadelphia 76ers here. The gets closer this evening. In Fort Lauderdale, Florida, non wrestler invited Steve Howe pitched one inning for the victory as the New York Yankees beat the Atlanta Braves 2 1 on Monday. Howe has been suspended six times 
Dragon Al Carbius gave up two hits before return. Andrew Thomas on the ground up. Think he's won the game on a rookie John Murma sacrifice in the bottom of the ninth. Like Kevin Matt single and reopened the ninth and took the second on pitch hitter Bill Hell. Single. Troy rolled one was advanced both with a set fast before Matt Carvey walked Jim Leavitt to fill the bases. Bear almost lifted a fly ball to right against the Braves to score Matt. The Yankees Sensley Mariners was only a player on an even team to produce a multi hit game. He was 2 to 3 with an RBI. Tommy Scher, Faye Visit attended the game. It was the first stop in a two week tour of spring training in Sacks. Sarah? On Thursday, we've got a winter weather advisory up. Not so much for the amount of snow we're going to see, but for the fact that the rain is going to change to snow and the temperatures drop so quickly. Okay, now into the weather. Here? Yeah. Right see. now, our current edition's at noon time in Atlanta. We got a temperature of 57 out in. Hartsfield, 56 in Marietta, 55 in Fulton County, 57 in The Cobb. 55 in Rome, 55 in Chattanooga, 53 in Athens, and 55 in Augusta, 59 in Macon, 57 in And it's a windy day with temperatures. Warner Robins, 56 in Columbus, Georgia, 55 in Albany, Georgia, 59 in Douglas, Georgia, 58 in Valdosta, 57 in Waycroft, 57 in Brunswick, 59 in Savannah, 63 in Hilton Heads Island, 57 in Charleston, 50 in Myrtle Beach, 52 out in Columbia, South Carolina, 45 in Florence, South Carolina, 47 in Greenville, 49 in Anderson, 54 in Hunt, 54 in Florence, 56 in Huntsville, 57 in Birmingham, 56 in Talladega, 57 in Tuscaloosa, 62 in Montgomery, 60 out in Troy, 58 in Dauphin, 62 in Mobile, 65 out in Pensacola, 60 in Panama City, 61 in Tallahassee, and 65 in Jacksonville. There. Okay, let's take a look at our map situation around the country. Here, it shows rainy skies from the central Ohio Valley and rainy skies in western Washington. Here, cloudy skies from much of the northeast and down from the Midland states. Setting park skies from much of the southeastern states. Cloudy skies from much of Oklahoma. The park skies in Colorado and cloudy skies in much of the northern Rockies and sunny skies in western states. High pressure in center in southern Utah and off the Florida coast and low pressure in southern British Columbia. Here. All right. Hopefully the luck of the Irish will keep it away. Okay. Far forecast for Georgia, for the mountains, including here in Atlanta. Today in Chris Cosby with a 4% chance of afternoon shots. Highs in mid 60s. Southwest wind about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, 8% chance of shots and thunderstorms. Low in the lower upper 40s. For the coast today, becoming part of Cali. Highs in the lower 70s. South wind about 10 to 50 miles per hour. Tonight, a 70% chance of shots and a few thunderstorms. Lower than the lower 50s. There. Forecast. Wednesday, Puck Cast Cards, Lord of the 60s, Thursday, Sight Cards, Upper 50s, and Friday, Sight Cards in the 50s. Here. Those who drank more than two drinks a week were twice as likely to give birth to premature babies as women who did not drink. New Bedford is beefing up security. Sun, set today, 6.43 p.m. Sunrise tomorrow morning, about 6.52 a.m. Not to bring several items, including backpacks to the race. The 13.1 mile race will also include more police officers this year. The move comes just days That's after... That's going the weather, here. Yeah. ...measures for next month's Boston Marathon. In Boston Strong, someone who knows a bit about running is helping others go the distance. Former Reebok CEO Paul Fireman and his wife Phyllis started secure jobs to connect people with employment opportunities more quickly. Through their charitable foundation, they've awarded... Okay, and People Briefs, producer Erwin Winkler found directed in the film Guilty by Suspicion about the blacklisting of Hollywood figures during the 1950s of your new experience. As a producer, the most important call you can get is on Saturday morning when the Friday night grosses come in. Said Winkler, whose producer credits a good good fellows. As a director, you what? Your film to be successful, but you I look a bit different. The stakes are high. If the film succeeds, you take them out. If it fails, you, there's no one else to blame. Winkler fitted out said. Guilty by suspicion started Robert De Niro explains how recovery has changed the motion picture industry. Fireman hopes the state will take over the program. Five Actress Lucy Arnaz says late mother, Lucy Ball, saved everything. Great. The comedian even saved the station from the Detroit Hotel where she decided to spend her honeymoon. Mrs. Arnaz noted, I don't think there's a hope chest anywhere to be big enough to hold all this stuff, she said. Some Miss Ball's Possession when lent to Lucy a tribute opening at Universal Studios Hollywood on March 22nd. The attraction is a 2200 square foot museum of costumes, photos, clips, and the I Love Lucy TV series and sets and home movies. And there's plenty more. A second museum will be open in Jamestown, New York, next year, Milk Ball's hometown of Stellan. Believe it or not, we still have a ton left, Miss Arnaz said. Breaking news. Author Tom Clancy says the United States should not slow its development of arms just because of its success in the Cold War and the war against Iraq. 
people are talking about a piece of it, but we got it wrong. The author of Hat for Rare Talk in another Cold War Frills told about 60 people at the reception to one and all. A person their first Sunday raised money to buy gifts for USS uh, Naples crew. Holded up a bottle of the nuclear attack submarine under the construction of Grout and He said, There's a defense that we will keep the peace. To attract the military just because we won the war, because we might need them for it someday. Plans to stick novel in Summer Ball Fear is. Joined by Bay, the USS Annapolis is the fourth ship to bear the name of Merrill's capital. The first was commissioned in 1896. And yeah, Mayor David Dinker and Hotel Jonathan Tish said they'll fight to keep the Grammy Awards a big apple another year. Take into the nuts, Monday that Tish, president of chief executive of Lowe's Hotels, had agreed to be chairman of New York's Grammy Committee. New York and the Grammys were truly much made in heaven. Tickets total news covers. We are. Wasted time to It's after an effort to bring next year's Grammys to the city. Tish, also a board member of the New York City Convention and Visitors Bureau, said we what Los Angeles know that they don't have a divine right to have this show every year or every other year. The Grammys Awards were held every year in New York until 19 when they went to the West Coast. They were held in New York in 88, Los Angeles in 89, and 1999 in New York last month. Right now, a face Jackson, Mississippi. Roommates Ernie and Bert behave like best friends. Fat one's furry and the others got feathers. Ernie, four months old, is a red rabbit and velvety brown ears. And Bert, three months old, is a golden black chicken. They share a pen at Jackson Zoo's Discovery Zoo of Chuna Zoo. Is sponsored by Senior Whole Health. I never put rabbits and chickens in together before this Discovery Zoo supervisor. Pat Steele said Sunday I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but since they've grown up together, we got into where they sleep together and they eat each other's food. I don't think either one of them knows what is sometimes. I just say we have frigates or chabots. Miss Steele explained how this relationship started. I had this little rabbit and one of the volunteers at hand raised that was lonely, Miss Steele said. Then we've hatched some little baby chicks and all of them, but when got and taken in the other places and we were left with this one lonely little chick. New York City apartment buildings killing at least As people. Mrs. Steele put the two animals in the adjoining cage just to keep each other company, after a while, I found it was silly to clean out two cages while well, it could be uh, cleaned out when I put them together since uh, they've been friends ever since. So employees suggested the name the pair Ernie and Bert after the Sesame Street Muppets here. And that's me it for the Channel 5 Eyewitness News. The new report on this March 12, 1991 on Tuesday. I'm Pete with you for a good evening coming to the next. Will be the young wrestler coming next on Channel 5. I would just news to be back at 5 and 6. Have a good evening. We'll see you at noon. Have a good day. Bye bye for now. Where?